Exactly a year ago, Mr. President announced that subsidy is gone. Subsidy on fuel subsidy is gone. And that singular statement threw Nigerians into muddy, muddy waters. We saw the price of petrol rise above 500 naira per litre. We saw cost of transportation hit the rooftop. And then the price of commodities in the market also hit the rooftop. That no doubt brought on due hardship on Nigerians. As we celebrate the president's um, 365 days in office, it's important that we also understand how we can cope with the perennial hardship that um, these uh, uh, decisions or policies of government has brought about uh, Nigerians. So on the show today, we shall be looking at um, youth in development and how to cope with um, a current economic hardship. We've been joined by the founder of Rich Anti Finance, Sarah Amana. She joins us from our Abuja studio. So good to have you on the show, Sarah. Good morning. Okay, I didn't hear you. I, I saw your lips move, but I didn't hear your, your good morning, Sarah. Let's be sure we're on the same page. Okay. I, I hope they, you might, you might, they might need to unmute your audio uh, from the studios there because I can't hear you. You can hear me, I can't hear you. Um, Sarah, so good to have you join us on the show this morning. Uh, it, it's important that we begin this conversation because it's obvious that many Nigerians have uh, found it difficult to cope with um, current economic realities. We have seen a rise in um, mental health cases, we have seen a rise in people uh, falling into depression, primarily because they cannot cope. They really can't cope with uh, current realities, inflationary pressures, uh, interest rate hike, and all of that, the uh, a, a, a shift in uh, a tariff, uh, electricity tariff, and all of that. These are quite some huge burden that many Nigerians carry, and they would wish that they, they know better on how they can deal, deal with this. Sarah, if you're there, uh, so good to have you again on the show, if you can hear me. All right, so we hope that uh, we can reconnect with Sarah on the conversation. You know, like I said earlier, inflationary pressure is one that many Nigerians uh, uh, is palpable. You can, you can literally feel it. Uh, you go to the market today, uh, and then you return to the market tomorrow. The price of the price of what you bought a day before has. So we having what we call like um, daily inflationary uh, pressure. Price of things that go up virtually on a weekly basis, on a, on, a, on a three day basis, and all of that. And it comes with huge, 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 huge pressure on the on our pockets. It comes with huge, huge pressure on uh, our finances. Uh, so many people uh, are finding it difficult to cope with this uh, current reality. Let's, let's, let's try and reconnect with um, Sarah again. Uh, Sarah, so, so good to have you on the show. Good morning. Good morning. It's so good to have you. Fantastic. It's so good to be here. Fantastic, it's yes. Here. Fantastic. So good to have you join us. Now, I'm happy I can hear you. Um, um, Sarah, uh, let, let's start off this conversation with... Um, you know, we, we, we run a series on, um, on the president's um, scorecard, one year in office, um, and your, your, your line of work is on finance. So let's look at um, how yeah. you want to rate or your, uh, another view of the economy uh, before we now dovetail into the real, the real conversation. How, how would you rate the economy in the last 365 five days. If I use yourself as a case study, how has the economy impacted you as an individual? Well, uh, the last 365 days of Mr. President being in office has been quite challenging. I'm not just talking for myself, I'm talking about um, generally. It has been quite challenging because we've seen the cost of everything, literally everything skyrocketed. So it's been it's been challenging, but like Nigerians that we are, we know how to cope. So that's just um, what I have to say about that. What is that biggest policy of government, uh, talking about the economy, what is that biggest policy that came with um, uh, the biggest adverse impact, negative impact on, on Nigerians? Um, it will be the subsidy on fuel. 
it has created it has really massively impacted on um, every Nigerian because you have the cost of goods the cost of services increase because of the fuel subsidy then we have inflation inflation has gone through the roof you have people finding it very hard especially the inflation on food it has made nigerians um, those who could afford to eat twice in a day can now only afford to eat once then you can imagine for those who could only afford to eat once what they are finding what they are actually doing right now mm. so it has been a lot of um, challenges like i said especially when it comes to transportation mm. because most nigeria is interconnected and then you have the whole transportation thing going on even for people who go to work some people find it very difficult to go to work these days then mm. they stick to the online um, platforms to be able to um achieve their tax for the day and then achieve their um Obligations. job duties yes. but it has been it has been tough on nigerians like i said especially the removal of fuel subsidy it has really been tough on nigerians all right um, sarah you know what hold your thoughts there uh, for the moment uh, let's um let's see and be sure that um what you talked about is exactly how nigerians feel uh, about the economy as we go to the street uh sample opinions on um uh, the economy and the president's 365 uh, days in office. So just, just, just stay with us. We'll be right back shortly. I only know Wiki, the current minister, and he's really trying. If you check very well, the roads that are abandoned for long, like I've been in Abuja, I can't tell, but like he has been working on the roads and is helping people come out. When you check very well, before you won't see a lot of people coming out driving their cars, but now you can see a lot of people coming out for work and all that. So I think he's really doing a good job. He's really trying. Well, I don't know much uh, about the minister, but one of the ministers that is commonly and very popular is uh, uh, Nelson Wiki, uh, minister of FCT. And he has been doing great in FCT. He has... Uh, ensure that most of those uh, uh, budgets that uh, most of those abandoned projects you know he ensured that many of them are completed by now uh, he has done well in his own field as a minister uh, i think he has brought his wealth of experience from gov governor to minister and we have seen it then also the minister of education although i've forgotten his name actually but he has also done very very well you know. All right, welcome back. We will go back to um, the sampling of, um, of um, opinions on the streets, but we still have Sarah with us in our Abuja studios. Uh, uh, Sarah is a finance expert, and uh, right about now, Sarah, let's, let's, let's hit the ground running. Let's hit the ground running. It is a sad place that many Nigerians have found, their, found themselves. Uh, with the rise in the cost of, um, of living, inflationary pressures over 30% as we speak. And um, sadly, it's a fact that uh, many Nigerians have not been able to increase their revenue. Revenue has been on one spot, but the cost of living, expenditures, uh, cost of expenditures seem to have hit the rooftop. Big, big concerns uh, that Nigerians have expressed. Uh, Sarah, just hold your thought. I think we have the right um, sam um, um, samples we want to play so you can, you can react to, to all of that. So let's take a listen and we'll come back to you, uh, Sarah. As a Nigerian, I'm not happy for what is going on in the country. So if they are ministers, they are ministers of their pocket and their families, not for me. So I don't care for those who do not care for me. So that's why I didn't even know them. Talk less of their, their portfolio. If he really wants a Nigerian to live like Nigerians, like a human being, or live as in a country, he should be talking about refinery in the first place. Put our refinery in the order, then empower the youth. I belong to maritime sector. Nothing is happening in my sector. All the kind of goods we used to work has been banned. Uh, the president said he, that he lifted bound on 43 items. Eatable, unfinished goods. We are involved like uh, wheat and all the rest. But finished products like uh, rice and all the rest are not included. So we are not interested in 
a government that will empower some, some little, little politicians in the name of frustrating others. What aspect are you going to? What, which of the minister? Is it minister of transport? Minister of uh, of Me, you know the system in our health system. Which of them now? So, so Madam, Madam, you as you are seeing me now already, the pressure on me as a Nigerian is already eating me up. Yes. First of all, I will tell him subsidy is a scam. As a Nigerian, I know. Okay, let me put myself as a president. First of all, what I will do as a president of this country, you see these things we are calling corruption and greediness. I will stop it first within, within myself so that I can deal with people. You cannot tell me that you are stopping corruption uh, subsidy when our refinery, no one is working. Yes, cost of living is weighing heavily on Nigerians. Uh, Sarah, um, before I went on that, um, on that um, um, street conversation, uh, I asked you, it is sad that revenues or incomes are not um, in pro increasing, but expenditures are hitting the rooftop. How do you think uh, um, Nigerians can, can, can deal with this? L let's start with the revenue conversation. How can Nigerians begin to think of increasing revenue at this point in time? Do you have any, any, any silver bullets you want, to, you want to offer Nigerians this morning? Okay, so the first thing I would say is financial literacy. That's like the foundation, that's the bedrock because you have to be able to, because um, even though the economy is hard right now, there are people who don't know how to manage their finances. They don't know how to manage their monies. So it's important to get financial literacy, financial knowledge. It helps you um, cushion the effect on whatever it is the economy is going through at the moment. Then the second thing I would um, suggest is budgeting. We talk about budgeting every day and people don't want to listen. They don't want to hear when it comes to budgeting because they are wondering, I'm never earning enough, how do I even budget? But it's important to budget because once you budget, you prioritize your needs. It helps you. It helps you know what to do. So it's important to budget. Like I said, it's important to have financial knowledge. Then it's important to increase your revenue. Look for means to diversify your revenue. It's very important. And these days we have a lot of skills out there. You can get a skill. You can sharpen your skills or hone your skills. If you're working in an organization, you can ask for a raise. You can, ask for, you can ask your boss to give you a raise. You can look for different ways to make income. Um, for the everyday Nigerian, you can decide to offer a service. Sometimes it's you monetizing your knowledge. Sometimes it's you helping people out with, with the everyday activities they do. It's important. Um, like I went somewhere a few days ago, and before I got out of um, the event, the gate man who was there washed our cars. And out of that um, excitement, because I had not washed my car, out of that excitement, I actually gave him a tip. So that is him making revenue. Imagine, aside the money he earns monthly, he has created an additional stream of income for himself, whereby he just washes people's cars, and out of their benevolence, they actually give him something. So those are ways you can increase your income. When we talk about increasing your income, People think um, you have to do something big or, or something. It's just um, from the little things around you. You could help a neighbor out with something. If either they are kids or something, you could help teach them extra lessons. You can do so much. There's so much you can do to earn more. Um, there's freelancing. There's data analysis for those who are tech savvy. Even if you're not these days, um, you can learn. It's easy when the age of technology, you have to get on the internet. You have to learn. So those are easy ways or ways you can actually increase revenue as a Nigerian at this moment. Mm. Let me think through what you just talked about uh, for a second, especially the concern around um, budgeting. And um, I'm asking myself, uh, I budgeted for this month, and um, by the time I went back to the market, the price of fees had gone up giving to inflationary pressures. And I budget again, and the next time I go, the price of things have gone up. By extension, my revenue is, 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 is being depleted, and I begin to cut out on things that I probably 
uh, things are, I think they are, they are not needs, they are wants, but then they are need, needed for survival. At the point in time, Sarah, I just might not be able to afford anything else in the market if I continue in that route. I don't know, what, what exactly do you think Nigerians can do? Because that's the situation many people find themselves uh, today. Yes. So in that case, yeah, that's the situation most Nigerians find, them, find themselves in today. But like we earlier mentioned, there's a limit to how much you can actually budget or even save. But there's no limit to how much you can earn. So what I always advise Nigerians or suggest to Nigerians is look for ways to earn more. Every day you wake up, that should be what is on your mind. Look for ways to earn more. Look for ways to serve people to earn from them. Because what happens is value. Money is attracted to value. Once you can offer value to someone, definitely you have a means of making um, a living. You have a means of increasing your income. If you can serve one person, one person a day and you have 10,000 naira. you can multiply that you can look for more people so the best way and the best solution for nigerians now is to look for how to earn more look for how to increase your revenue diversify your streams of income like we know if you have just one stream of income you are literally at the verge of you are, you are just one step away from poverty literally so it's important to have different sources of income. You can invest if you have the money to. You can look for how to earn more. Those are like the suggestions I can give. If by the time you budget every month, you go to the market and you have things keep going up, look for how to earn more, especially if you have kids. How do you want to do that? How do you want to do that? I'm a mother myself, and then I know how important it is for me to provide for my kids every day. They come with demands. They, they are not asking you for, um, they are not asking you, are asking you um, if you don't have it, okay, no. They demand and you have to meet up with their demands. And especially it's just basic needs they're looking for. Food, shelter, um, and their basic needs. So it's important for you to look for how to earn more. Increase your revenue. Think outside the box. Think inside the box and increase your revenue. Uh, I'll come back to that because uh, um, right now I want to be your student. So I would like you to help me uh, how I can increase my revenue rather than just uh, sit down here and speak um, for four hours every morning. Um, let's look at this concern around uh, wants and needs. Shadow, we're talking about budgets and the, the need to buy food and all of that. Uh, wouldn't you think that um, Nigeria should begin to cut down on? Um, what they really don't need, um, uh, certain things that um, we we'll probably do for, for pleasure. Uh, shouldn't, it be, shouldn't it be time that we begin to think of how we can completely cut down on those things? Uh, uh, maybe that could even help us with, our sa with the savings or opening up more funds for other things. Yeah, like, I mean, uh, I have certain things that I naturally would have loved to, to have, maybe like have a, uh, two bottles of red wine in my fridge every week or every month or, and all of that. But right now, we just might have to, uh, you know, leave it water uh, because um, the red wines are not smelling anymore uh, in the market. I don't know what you think about that, Sarah. Yeah. Yes, I think it's important at this point. This is the situation we find ourselves in in Nigeria today. So I think it's very important to actually know the difference between your wants and your needs. Even from your needs, it's important to actually even cut back a bit. That's why we say there's a decline in the standard of living of Nigerians. Somehow the, you can't, um, there's really nothing you can do about it. So you have to cut down. You have to definitely cut down. Um, so you have people who eat and then they have to eat with four meat, four pieces of meat. You can cut it down to one. It reduces your budget on that. There are people who spend on subscriptions. You can unsubscribe to many of those platforms. Be it DSTV, you can stick to NTA, you can stick to Silverbed. You can just cut down on your needs and your wants. It's important right now to prioritize essential needs. Very, very essential. Your basic needs, 
is what you should be looking at at this point in time so you even have money to save and invest for the future it's very important at this point in time to cut down on your unwanted expenses yeah you know it's it's, it's very key sarah it's just to be very key i i, I know that uh, naturally many nigerians uh, had begun to you know you know practice what 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 you have what you have just talked about it just comes naturally uh you you learn common sense when uh, hardship hits you in nigeria um you talked about value here i mean value had because uh, value add because um you know making money any revenue is about being able to solve a problem identify a problem and being able to plug in as a solution to that problem uh, do you know how, how can Nigerians uh, be a bit uh, begin to identify problems and begin to build up values? Because to even have value, uh, be able to add value, also costs money. If I have to go for a, a training, uh, it's going to cost me some money as well. I don't know. Are there ways? Are there NGOs that are ready to uh, give values to Nigerians, help Nigerians build, build values that could help them, you know, better or solve situations? Uh, I don't know if you if you know any any, and uh, maybe want to suggest to many Nigerians because it's important that we begin to look for streams of income, like me as well. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's important to add value. It's important to look for other streams of income where you can get um, income in for yourself. But um, the first thing and the most important thing is to start within yourself, look within yourself. You definitely have something you can use to start, to kickstart whatever it is you want to start. Um, so like uh, for someone who has an experience or something, you can monetize your knowledge. For a student, you can teach other students if you're better than them, if you're more intelligent than them, you can do that. You can utilize whatever resources you have at your disposal part time. For some, is your phone. With your phone, you can help other people manage their times, um, um, manage their time. We have um, virtual assistants. We have um, social media managers. You don't have to really go to school to be able to do that. There are some people that are naturally gifted with those kind of things. They can be on social media chatting. You can help someone do that and they pay you per month. It's important to look within yourself first and see what you can do before reaching out for help. So when it comes to um, organizations that can help out, help Nigerians at this point, we have so many banks doing that. In fact, almost all the banks in Nigeria offer SM SMEs um, loans for women especially. We have a Wema Bank. They call the program Sarah. You can apply for it, and then I think they, they have um, times and seasons where they do it. Um, it's not monthly, but you can apply for that. We have Fidelity Bank. We have First Bank. We have a lot of banks giving out loans to businesses. If your business is struggling and all that, you can meet them, and then they help you out with a loan. So um, those are a few financial sector or financial um, organizations I know that offer people loan. We have um, Opay. Most of these um, fintech platforms offer loans. It's just that the problem with Nigerians is they use loan for consumption. They are not using it to build their businesses, to, um, to further their lives and invest. They're using it to, um, for consumption, to take debt, to to buy things they actually I, even I don't need sometimes and Sarah. most times that's what happens I, so I, those I, are um, avenues you can nigerians uh, can use to uh, all right to improve to scale their, up and add value their, their lots. yes, yes. Uh, thank you so very much um, um sarah uh, even though my marketers are waiting for you at the at the end of the show with the voucher uh, for those banks that you mentioned uh, uh, you have to pay for advertorial for those banks that you mentioned, but then that's, that's, that's on, the, on the lighter note. Sarah, uh, Nigeria, we hail these our new national anthem. Does it matter to you at all? Yeah. <laughs> ah. Well, at this point, survival is what matters, and the national anthem is definitely not something I will survive on. So at this point, I'm not sure it matters to me. No, it doesn't. Hmm. Sarah, thank you so very much for your time with us on the show. It's a pleasure having you come talk to us on ways uh, to cope 
with current economic uh, hardship in Nigeria. Thank you so very much, Sarah, and thank you again. Do have yourself a wonderful day, and bye for now. You too. Thank you.